Hello everyone, Rurikan here coming at you with another First Impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at Destiny of Spirits. So this game has actually been out for quite some time, this is a PlayStation Vita exclusive and uh, it is a game that I saw a couple of things on um, quite a while back but I never really delved into it all that much. However, recently I had a friend of mine who told me like, oh man, there's this game that's free on the, on the PSN store for the Vita that is kind of like this summoning spirit, the, the spirit summoning game where you duke it out with uh, spirits and whatnot. And, and just like the way that he was describing it seemed really weird. Then he was telling me it's kind of like Hearthstone in a way. And I was like, hmm, Hearthstone. Okay, that, that kind of got my attention a little bit. And it is not like Hearthstone, but uh, it's definitely got a couple of interesting elements that I decided like, well, let's just go ahead and show people how this works. Now, for starters, if you guys notice here, you will notice that there is an image of the globe. This is actually the planet Earth. You guys will be able to identify like uh, North America, South America. You'll also be able to identify that the place that I'm at right now is actually uh, Portugal. Uh, the kind of like the location that you see my character in right there in the middle, that is Portugal. Uh, beneath us, we also have the continent of Africa and all the countries of Europe and whatnot. And uh, yeah, this is actually the world, um, the world map. And so you kind of start in your country of origin. This game makes extensive use of GPS technology as well as uh, Eastern, um, like Eastern. What what do you call it? Uh, you know the 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 thing that those um, like palm readers and stuff like those kinds of people, like occult readers, or whatever, based on Eastern things of that nature so to speak, um, they kind of do a lot of calculations and all kinds of crazy stuff uh, that will influence your character. Um, what is it, the other thing, like the, the signs? Astrology, yes, that's it, I think. Eastern astrology. Um, and uh, astrology, astrology, Eastern astrology. Astrology, damn it, I can't pronounce astrology, never mind. But yeah, based on those kinds of things, that is going to decide um, a, lot of, um, a lot of factors that will influence the way that you will be able to play the game. So there are several things that you have to take into consideration before we even get to the gameplay because the, like, the tutorial actually goes through several important aspects. Uh, let's begin by trying to look up all of these options here on the side. Well, we're not going to go to ranking and options because, I mean, obviously options uh, should be pretty much straightforward. It's going to give you options like on controls and stuff like that. Um, change your name, search, social networks, whatever. Don't really care too much about that. Now, something that I already have kind of a complaint about in this title is time that it usually takes you to navigate between menus. Like, it takes quite a bit because it is constantly reading GPS data. And I really feel that they need to optimize that a little bit. But let's first go into summon. Okay, so how does summon work? Here is where you can summon spirits. Spirits is what you use to do battle... Um, in this title and this is not actually against other players like you might think this is actually more of a pve experience and most of the interactions with other players at least up until this point has been of a cooperative nature now in here you can actually summon uh spirits um that you can then use in battle um like for instance let me show you guys my spirit collection up until this point uh if we go over here to the spirits menu this is all made by touchscreen interface, by the way, which is why you're not seeing me actually uh, touch any buttons or you see any button prompts in here. Everything in this game is touchscreen, like the, the, the buttons that you see there, you just kind of touch them with your thumb or whatever a way you prefer to touch them, and it is all touch interface, which I know that for some players is going to be a problem because me personally, I'm also not a big fan of games that overuse touch mechanics because I really like, one of the things I really like about the Vita that I prefer over like playing video games, say on my cell phone or something like that, is the fact that it's got buttons on it. You know, I mean, like I would much rather use buttons for it, but it is pretty much a touch interface all the way. So these are the spirits that I've collected up until this point. Now, each spirit has like a certain element to it, like the, the purple thing that you guys see on this guy is um, dark. Then you have um, this guy over here, the boar. This is a, is it earth? I think this is earth. This is the earth element. Uh, and then you have kind of like a uh, rock, paper, scissors uh, setup 
to each of these elements, which I will show you guys in a couple of seconds. But anyways, this is my spirit collection. Um, it appears that you can have all the way up to 20 spirits at any given time. Uh, and you guys might be wondering, so what if I summon more than 20 of them? Well, then you can merge them uh, and you like select the base spirit that you want to boost the level of. Like, let's say I wanted to level up this dude over here. Uh, I would be able to select him and then I could select up to five enhancer spirits and it would basically sacrifice those other spirits to level up this one spirit. So you kind of like analyze the ability of each of these spirits to decide which ones are more valuable to you and then you sacrifice the ones that aren't that valuable. Now you will notice that we have a couple of spirits here that actually say power up. This is because of my current uh, luck. So there is something that happens uh, that ch this changes, I believe, every single day, once again, based in Eastern Astrology. Um, and what happens is uh, every single day you will get a certain element associated with you and you will get um, like something good or bad happen associated with that, associated with that element. Uh, this is my first day playing this game. And uh, for my first day, what I got was a great blessing on fire. So these two guys over here are fire spirits. And uh, so that's why they have the power up thing there, because apparently the fact that I have great blessing and fire means that they are a little bit more powerful than normal. Uh, you can also sell uh, your spirits if you so desire, and that is going to give you, I believe, the blue currency that you see over there. That currency can be used to, um, I think it's mostly to, uh, what, how do you call it, to rent spirits from other players. Yes, you can rent spirits from other players for your battles. Uh, there is also a friends list, but this friends list that you guys see here is not actually a list of, um, of your like friends list, of your standard PSN friends list. This game has a separate friends list, and it's important for you to ally with people that are close by to you, because then they will be able to come to your aid, because the, the whole notion of uh, geographical location is very important to this game uh, because like I said you start out at your own country and then you begin like clearing um, areas around your country and so if you team up with other players that are close to you they will be able to help you and you'll be able to help them in return I know that this is kind of confusing right now for me to just you know say these um, these terms like that you really have to go through the tutorial to fully understand this game. I'm just going to try and show you guys um, a little bit of gameplay here and then we'll talk a little bit more about the different features of this title. So uh, right now, if you notice, I have four areas that are blinking. This means that I can go to any of these areas and start basically clearing those areas up. The area that I'm in right now, I've already cleared it. It was the very first area I've done. The area above me, which is uh, blue, I've also cleared that because I just decided, no, since I started here, I might as well clear the entirety of Portugal. So um, next up, I'm going to move on to the area that's uh, up and to the right because apparently I have a friend there. So we're going to be going there and then there's a higher chance that my friend comes to help me or that I can go ahead and help my friend. So when you go to any of those areas, you're going to enter battle against these chaos spirits and the, the missions are going to show up in the form of that shape that you see there in the middle. You press that and it's going to tell you the battle that you have to do. So we have two battles that we need to do here. Uh, we have a battle against chaos spirits of water element and then we have a battle of chaos spirits of fire element. So we're going to start by the first one. Uh, I'm not sure if I already completed that one or not. I think I might have already completed that, which is why it's grayed out. So let's actually go for the second one. Uh, so this is going to tell you how many battles you're going to have to do. Now, for this particular fight, it's only going to be one battle. Sometimes it's more than one battle, which means you need to make sure that your spirits are going to endure uh, fighting two battles. And over there to the very right side, you will see the uh, rock, paper, scissors uh, system that I told you guys about. So those are the, um, I was going to say five, but there's actually seven elements in the game. So uh, starting from that yellow spinning thing, that is metal. So basically their idea is metal chops down trees, trees grow on earth, earth muddies up water, water puts out the fire, and fire uh, melts metal. So that's kind of the way that that system is. So it's constantly... 
um, uh, like one element has advantage over the other. So fire has advantage over metal. Metal has advantage over trees. Trees have advantage over earth. Earth has advantage over water. Now, the other two elements that are beneath are light and dark, and those change depending on the date that you play the game. So sometimes light will overcome darkness. Other times darkness will overcome light. So you need to bear that in mind because the, the concept of elemental opposites is very important in this game because if you have a monster, uh, I, I, I was going to say monster, but it's actually a spirit. If you have a spirit that's the elemental opposite of the thing you're fighting against, then you're going to have more, uh, you're going to do more damage. If the, the, the other thing happens, so if your enemy has a spirit that is your elemental opposite, he's going to deal more damage to you. Now, uh, you can have up to uh, six creatures on any given battle. However, you'll notice that I only have five spaces. That's because once I fill in five spaces or however, however many spaces I end up using, you still have access to summon one creature from your friends list as um, an assistance, an assistance supporter, something along those lines. And you will use the uh, blue currency that you see up top there, which I have 3,655 of, You'll use that currency to rent a spirit from one of your friends. So how does this work? Well, for starters, um, over here on your uh, party setup, the character that has a crown next to it, which is the leftmost character, that character is going to uh, usually, if you put a character in there that has a support skill, that character is going to provide you with a passive bonus to all your creatures. Now, the first thing, first thing I usually do is I reset this whole thing because it just makes it a lot easier to set up your uh, party. Now, if you guys notice, it's going to tell me the overall element that is going to dominate uh, my next fight. It is telling me that on the very top, and it is going to be a fire element. So, obviously, I want to try and see how many water elements I can put in my party So, because I'm going to be doing more damage against fire. Now, for starters, you want to look for creatures that, um, because like I said, that first spot is for a creature that is going to give you a buff. Now, I already know that I have a water creature that gives me a buff, which happens to be this guy. This guy is Kelpie. He is of self Celtic myth and folklore, and basically what he does, he's got a support skill right there. So that support skill is going to uh, raise the speed by 5% on all my other spirits. That's not the best support skill I can possibly have, but he is a water uh, type creature, so a um, water type spirit, so obviously I'm going to select him. He is going to be kind of like the party leader, so he's going to be constantly giving out that support skill that raises my uh, the speed of my allies by 5%. Now, we want to get more water-based um, creatures and we actually have quite a few which is interesting i wasn't aware that i had so many water-based creatures up until this point i've had to pretty much um i've had to um like you know pick and choose creatures that weren't necessarily always of the opposite element however you need to be careful about something which is the fact that the computer might come out with creatures that are your of the opposite element of their own opposite element to counterbalance that so that's something that you need to keep in mind so like, for instance, if I just put a full party of water, if the computer happens to put a couple of uh, earth minions in there together with the boss that I'm fighting, he's going to beat the crap out of me. So you need to kind of balance your party out in a way. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm pr I probably want to put um, maybe not a fire one because I, I really do like the fire creatures, but maybe I don't want to put a fire one because, well, actually, if my opponent is fire, I should have a fire one because it's not going to do me that much damage and I'm not going to do that much damage to him to deal with whatever he happens to put there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another water creature. I'm actually going to use this spirit because I haven't used him yet. Uh, he's got a skill, which is the blue arrow. It deals 0.8 water damage to one enemy. He does not have a support skill. If he had a support skill, I would have been able to put him in place of the other creature that I had there, and he would be buffing my entire party with that skill. Now, besides that, let's go grab uh, one of my other fire creatures, which is this one. This was this was a creature that I got during the tutorial. I'm not sure if I can actually... Can I put this guy up there? Yeah, I can. So if you guys notice, there is a cost associated with each of these creatures. It says right there on top, cost 1.0, cost 1.0, and cost 1.5. That puts us at 3.5, and at any given time, we can have up until 5.0 cost right now. I'm not sure if this changes as you you know, advance in the game or what happens with that. But right now I can only have up to 5.0. So I'm going to select yet another creature. Uh, I could have another water creature, but I want to go with a creature that costs like 1.5 just in case. 
Uh, we're going to go with an Earth Elemental creature. We have that Minotaur there, which is probably going to be what we're going to be using. Um, so yeah, let's go with this... Um, not Minotaur, Centaur, sorry. Let's take this Centaur dude here with us. And this is actually the most people I've ever had in a party, because usually I tend to use spirits that cost more... Um, cost more of that cost above their, their heads there. And um, that is, usually makes me have a smaller party. Now, once you select the party that you want to go ahead and take into battle, you press next, and then it gives you an option of going through your friends lists to rent specific uh, support characters that they have. So, for instance, I could rent this uh, dragon over here by f by using 40 of that uh, currency that we have up top. And this dragon would give me the buff of reducing the damage received by 3% for all allies. Now, the thing is, you can only have active in battle at any given time three creatures. So it is going to select three creatures off of this setup for your beginning um, stages of the fight. And then as those creatures die off throughout the fight, it is going to replace them with others. Now, something very important to note is that the, um, the creature that you get from your friends always gets summoned. And the creature that you use for your party leader always gets summoned as well. The other creature, I think it's like randomly picked or something. But uh, we're going to go with this since the summoned creature that I got is also a water creature. So I think we have somewhat of a strong against fire setup here whilst also having quite a couple of um, quite a couple of not water creatures just in case he comes up with a counter for that. Supporter will be rented and the battle will commence. The rental will require 40 spirit points. Continue. Yes. Again, with the whole GPS location, it is constantly checking your GPS location, which is somewhat frustrating sometimes. Particularly because my internet connections aren't, that my internet connection isn't amazing. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the battle. Purify all chaos spirits. Now, let me just uh, go ahead and pause this before we actually get started. Okay, so the way this works is if you notice, each of the spirits currently on screen has like a white circle beneath him. Some of those circles are just about to begin filling up, as you can see on the enemy spirits, which are on the upper left corner of the screen. They're just beginning to fill up. And um, on my side, you will notice that I'm already a little bit more advanced uh, when it comes to when it comes to those particular circles, because for whatever reason, some of my creatures are being a little bit faster. Namely, the fire creature has the uh, great blessing, um, the great blessing from my daily login buff or whatever you want to call it. And uh, as you guys see there, we have a water element on the enemies as well as two fire elements. And on my side, we have two water elements and one fire element. So right now, I would say I have a little bit of the upper hand because I have two counters on him and he only has one counter on me because fire be uh, water beats fire uh, is the only thing that really matters in this entire fight. It's not the other way around. It's not fire also beats water. No, it's just water beats fire straight up. So, um, what we're going to be doing here is um, I'm going to be focus focusing fire on one of the fire creatures with two of my creatures because it's pointless for me to use my fire creature to attack the water creature because it's not going to do that much damage. But uh, the way that you pause the game is you just select one of your spirits and the game pauses to give you time to select your target. So, for instance, I selected um, my friend's rented spirit. And now I'm going to get him to attack the uh, spirit on the right side of the enemy. So there we go. Now I'm going to select this fire spirit to attack the guy on the right side as well. Except I already let one attack go off to the um, that other creature. That's okay. Now I'm going to get this guy to attack this and we should be okay. Now you'll notice that there's like... Um, um, whenever I let go of this uh, screen, this pause screen, you'll notice that there's lines for each of my creatures which are um, assigning targets, so to speak. Notice the lines. You should be able to see those lines on screen right now, which indicate the targets of each of my spirits. Now, on top of that, you will also notice that there is a little white bar on the bottom right corner. I'm going to unpause the game again. You see that white bar? It slowly fills up as you do your attacks and stuff like that. And as that white bar fills up, uh, you will notice that certain creatures will begin um, having the words on top of them that say skill ready. Now, each of your spirits is going to have different skills available to them. Like, for instance, this horse has a skill that says it deals 1.1 water damage to one enemy. It looks like we already killed one of the fire spirits. I didn't even notice that. It's just the combats go really, really fast. So that is something that uh, 
you guys will just get used to it. Um, but anyways, we have this basically water skill. I'm gonna do this water skill aqua shot. Aqua shot on this guy. So you'll notice he does an aqua shot and guy goes out. Now we only have uh, water damage enemies, so basically we have to do water versus water, which is kind of like neutral. There's no elemental opposites. I'm just going to use fire to kind of provide uh, with backup for now, but this combat is pretty much won. I'm not sure if you guys kind of understood how the combat went there, since this combat is pretty fast and pretty hectic, and you kind of almost have to play it in order to properly understand it. But once you beat uh, your enemies, you're going to get rewarded with... Um, oops, sorry about that. I hope that mouse cursor wasn't there that whole time. Um... But as you go ahead and you beat your enemies, you will notice that you're going to get rewarded with uh, some points. Now, you're going to get rewarded with uh, spirit points, which are the blue thing, and then you also have these other, like, silver-looking things. And I'm going to tell you what those things are for. So we've just uh, completed this fight, so let me just... What the hell is this? Oh, I've never gotten this before. Looks like we unlocked the spirit by completing this, uh, this battle. That's pretty cool. So we've gotten an additional spirit. Now the thing is, I do believe it's time that we have to uh, start selecting the kind of spirits that we want to keep and the spirits that we don't want to keep, but before we do that, let's go ahead and summon another spirit. I'm not entirely sure if the whole 20 spirits limit is, um, is actually what I think it is, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's going to limit the amount of spirits that we're able to have at any given time. It is not the total amount of spirits, it is the amount of spirits that we're able to have. So let's start with this. We're going to do summoning. Uh, it's going to spend 300 summoning stones. You get these by doing battle, as you guys can see. You usually get a ton of these uh, just by doing your regular missions that you have to do. So thing, go ahead. Boom. Now it's going to summon a spirit for me. Let's see what spirit we get. We get Dazbog, of which we already have one, by the way. So now let's go ahead and continue summoning. I think they're only going to let me summon one more. And I'm probably going to get another repeated spirit. Yep, another Doppelganger, of which I already have one as well. Now it's probably not going to let me uh, summon more yet. This feature is unavailable because you've reached the maximum number of collectible spirits. Tap spirits on the main menu and then make an opening in your collection in one of the following ways. Increase the limit of collectible spirits, sell collected spirits, merge spirits. You can increase the limits? That's interesting, because I'm pretty much a someone who is very interested in collecting spirits, because I kind of like the whole idea of that. It's almost like a more interesting version of Pokemon. I keep, I keep making fun of Pokemon. That's just the way I am. Sorry about that. Oops, I went into the friends list. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's actually go ahead and go into the spirits list this time around, please. Thank you. Again, it's the whole touch interface thing. I think it would be a lot more precise with um, with um, th using the actual controls on the Vita. Okay, it looks like we can't expand the collection size. That is going to cost us uh, 10 of the premium currency of the game. Yes, since this is a free-to-play title, it also has premium currency. I think that was kind of to be expected. Uh, so something that I'm going to do here is I'm going to consume two of the spirits that I already have. So let's say we have this doppelganger guy right here. But maybe I don't want to raise him though. Uh, I want to maybe select one of the creatures that I actually want to level up. Now one of the more powerful creatures I have is this guy over here, Layden. Uh, he is of the tree, um, he is of the tree variety of spirits. And the thing about him is he was the first, um premium spirit that I summoned because for completing the tutorial they give you some of the premium currency and through the premium currency you can also summon premium spirits which up until now they do seem to be more powerful than the regular spirits I'm still kind of learning my ropes on this game so I'm not entirely sure if premium currency just means pay to win or not but up until this point I kind of get that feeling although to be completely honest since this isn't really about fighting against other players not entirely sure how much that really bothers me you know because it's like Sure, you can be more powerful, but you guys saw how fast I took on that mission right there, didn't you? So that's not really like a big deal. Um, so let's go ahead and try to level up this guy. How do I... Oh yeah, you need to go to merge. And then we select the spirit that we want to level up, which in this case I want to level up this guy, who is he's pretty much a beast. He's usually the guy I use as my party leader, because if you look at his support skill, 
raises critical hit rate by 10% for all allies. So it's 10% extra crit for all the other spirits. So that's kind of why I like him so much. So we're going to do this guy. And we're going to go and pick up the uh, the spirits that we have um, two of. So like we have two doppelgangers. So we'll select this guy. We also happen to have two of um, this guy right here. So we'll select him too. We're going to merge. That is going to cost us some spirit points, which is again the blue currency that you have over there up top. And basically those two spirits are going to be gone and this spirit is going to get some experience. Let's see how much that experience is if it allows us to level up. Not exactly sure what happens when you do level up. Uh, let me just hit view status and see what changes. Okay, you definitely get more hit points and apparently you just get better stats overall. So uh, that's pretty cool. So this guy leveled up and now we have two more slots for summoning spirits, which means you can actually go back and summon a couple of more spirits to our collection here. Now, I will be talking, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I was going to talk about the premium currency, but there's not really a whole lot to say. I'll just go to the shop in a couple of seconds here and uh, show you how you can buy this. But before we do that, let's... Why am I in the spirit section? I wanted to go to the summon section, sorry. Uh, it's just like doing commentary and you, e you can get easily distracted by the whole wait times that you have in between navigating through these menus. It's very annoying. But if you notice here on the summon section also, you'll notice that there's two more things to summon. And one of them actually says Gravity Rush, which some people might be a little bit confused by this. What this means is that there are uh, spirits that you can summon, which are advanced. So like for instance, your regular summon will give you access to uh, these spirits. Now, these spirits are also based on region. So the spirits that you guys are seeing here, these are spirits for Europe. There is a different list of spirits for the United States, and then there's yet another different list of spirits for Japan. Japan, I mean the, the Asian era, the Asian continent, so to speak. So yeah, these are the spirits that I am able to summon in Europe. As you guys can see here, I can summon any one of these spirits through the use of uh, just regular summoning. However, then there are also advanced summons. These, again, are also uh, only for Europe. There is another version of the advanced spirits for the United States. You apparently can't see their stats. I'm trying to click them to see if I can see their stats to see if they're possibly all more powerful than the regular summons or not, but I'm going to assume that they are. Um, and then there is also these timed opportunities, which, uh, for instance, this gravity rush thing is going to last for the next 12 days plus four hours. You are able to summon a premium spirit from gravity rush which I actually did one of these as well, uh, since I had, I received more currency because I was a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Uh, so I was like, well, I'll just summon one of these, um, one of these spirits from um, Gravity Rush. I got the old man here, the, the guy, I think this is the guy who actually made, makes the world in, in the storyline of Gravity Rush, if I remember correctly, the old man with the beard. Uh, so this is the spirit I got, and he, he's not really that amazing, so. But yeah, there's all these other spirits that you can get. And before this, I believe you could get spirits from the game uh, Knack, uh, which was the PlayStation 4 launch title. But yeah, they do these temporary promotions here. Now, how do you get this, this premium currency that I see here? Because you can, only, you, you can only summon advanced and the timed spirits by using the premium currency. Well, if you go to the shop, this is, the, um, this is going to tell you the kind of stuff that you... Well, purchase Destiny Orbs. So it's going to open up uh, a PlayStation um, store page that is going to show you how you can purchase Destiny Orbs. And I know that this is going to turn a lot of people off. It definitely turns me off. But the thing is, I still have all these spirits that I can get with the regular type of thing. So I don't know. But yeah, you can get a bunch of Destiny Orbs through money, which is kind of how this game makes its, um, makes its money. Because obviously it's free to play, but it, you're always going to have to pay for something. So in this case, you pay for the premium spirits and the timed uh, exclusive spirits that you can have in the world. However, so far, I have to say, I, I haven't really felt like I was gimped in any way. Uh, it also seems that um, if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you're going to get some of this premium currency every month. I was able to get uh, 35 of the premium currency straight up uh, from PlayStation Plus. 
And uh, I was reading up online and apparently you're able to get like 20 or something every single month. I'm not exactly sure how that works. But also there's another time thing that you have in this title, which currently you can see there as darkness approaches. So this is another time thing that uh, like a timed event that happens in the game. And um, this has you doing uh, raid bosses. So this event is going to last for an additional uh, 12 days and four hours. And um, basically what you do is as you play through just normally through unlocking your regular areas doing fights like the one you saw in this video, you will eventually gain access to bosses in here. So you can click start mission and that is going to tell you the kind of boss that you're going to be encountering. Now there's a raid boss here. It is going to be here for another hour. It is a level three Chernob Chernobog. And um, the way you do this is you just press fight. This Chernobog is dark, so you're going to want to use a... There's no other players participating in this fight. Sometimes there are more players participating, which actually makes the raid fight a lot easier. But when there are no, no other players participating, basically you have five attempts to take the boss down. The boss's health uh, saves at the end of each fight. So if you take down 2,000 uh, per fight or whatever, you let's say you do two fights, you're going to take out down 4,000 health on the boss, and you have three more tries. So let's just do one fight here. Uh, we got um, the boss is dark, so we want to use want to try to use spirits that are light because currently light is beating the dark. Uh, so let's go ahead and reset here. And let me just select, uh, we don't really have, I don't think our light spirit, which we only have one, is this guy. I don't think he's got a support skill, does he? Nope. He does not have a support skill, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick our big um, our big guy that we buffed up, because he's got the, the skill that I like the most. And then we're going to pick the light dude. He also costs two. This is going to be bad, because if we pick these, we're only going to be able to get two spirits. Yep. We're only able to get two spirits for this fight because we have 2.5 plus 2. That puts us at the limit for this fight. Alternatively, what I can do is uh, switch the leader around so that I can have another character in there. And I actually have a pretty decent leader if I take like two fire minions, considering that the fire minions are actually beefed up because of my blessing. Uh, however, it looks like my fire dude's actually pretty beat up from the last fight. You'll notice that his hit point, um, his... Um, health pool is not full so I might want to pick up one of my other fire dudes I have this guy here what, is, what does he do he does not have a support skill but this guy has a support skill right raises speed by five percent for each fire spirit for all the allies so we're gonna try and get two fire spirits in there we're gonna select this guy Take this guy and then let's select another fire spirit since they're getting a little bit beefed up due to my uh, daily blessing Let's see which one of these has more hit points, this guy, so we'll take this guy. Let's see how we're doing in terms of cost. Five out of five. Okay, we're looking good. We got two fire spirits and one light spirit, so the fire spirits are going to be buffed up due to my daily blessing. The light spirit is going to do extra damage because light is currently beating dark. So we're going to go to next, but since this is a raid fight, you want to get even more uh, enemies in here, uh, at least more help. So I want to try and see if any of my friends has like a light um thing this guy has a light here the dead peppy guy he's got a light elemental that we can use uh alaric also has a light one and his seems to be um his seems to be even better because it costs more uh okay we'll do it we have a ton of this uh spirit currency so whatever we'll do this we'll only activate for friends i, I don't know what that means though oh here it is frolicking dolls wait a second is this guy not on my friends list and that's why I can't have this? No, 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 I'm sorry, dude. In that case, I don't want this. I'll take this. There we go. Raises critical hit rate by 5% for all allies and he is a light minion. So this is going to go a lot better. The rental will cost 90 spirit points. Sure thing. Pay that up. And this is a fight that we'll actually lose. Like, there is no way that I can beat that raid boss on the first attempt. Friends to lean on. Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit faster through this fight, uh, simply because, I mean, you guys already kind of know how this stuff works. So let me just think a little bit here before we get started. So I noticed that we have two water elementals. This is actually pretty bad because if the water elementals kind of gang up on my fire dude there, he's going to have a really bad time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely ignore them. 
because I have two light uh, spirits up right now and we want to get as much damage in on the boss as we possibly can since we're not going to kill the boss on this attempt anyways and we already know that his little helpers are going to be water for the next fight so I'm probably going to bring earth elementals the next time around. So let's put this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here and everybody just attacking the raid boss. Because my theory right now is I'm going to lose this fight so what I want to do is just dish out as much damage to this boss as I possibly can. That's so like, just come at me and just... Oh. Now this happens every now and then and I totally miss there, but like your friends will assist you um, with uh, strikes and you have to pay attention. I wasn't paying attention. But when that happens, you need to press that, that uh, red dot right in the middle and you're going to do uh, an additional attack on the boss that's going to deal a little bit more damage. Now we have a skill that's ready on this guy, it's Holy Ring, it's going to deal 0.8 light damage, which is pretty good, it's going to hit everyone on the enemy team, so just let's do that. Here comes the skill. And everybody else just keep on attacking, just dish out as much punishment as we can while our characters are alive. Also notice that the Ooh, that hurts. What's this, a fire dude? Brave arm, raises attack by 10% for 15 seconds. Well, my light dude's about to die, but at least he's going to have additional attack for a while. There we go, that's going to buff him up, which means his next attack is going to deal a little bit more damage. Don't die on me. Do one more attack at least. Nope, he's gone. That was a waste. Oh well. I only have this one fire dude. Buff yourself with your own skill, dude, and get going. No quarter, no surrender. And I'm about to wipe on this raid right here. Wow, one hit point. He's still going. Look at him. What a beast. <laughs> and whack. that was the end of that. Just like I said, we were going to lose this fight. We were supposed to lose this fight. But the thing about raid bosses is that you get more than one attempt. Request help sent to friends. That's another thing. When you lose against the raid boss, this is going to send a, a help request to friends. That means if your friends happen to be playing while you are also doing the raid boss, they might uh, jump in the fight and help you out as well and take out a significant chunk of the boss's health. So, let us continue here. Now, the thing is, we have to keep in mind that, the, the, like I said at the start of that fight, this raid boss had water elemental uh, supports with him so his ads were basically water elements so what we want to do this time around is instead of using um instead of using the fire dudes we want to go ahead reset the party and let's go pick up something that can deal with water elements now the thing is let me see uh, this guy hasn't really regenerated yet uh i don't have any i i, I still have a lack of characters that actually have support skills so that's one of my big problems right now uh, because I really don't want to use fire creatures on this fight right now because of those water creatures are actually just chewing me down. Um, but I do want to use like earth creatures and stuff like that. So we might just go without a support skill for this one. So we'll start with this guy. He's going to be the party leader despite the fact that he's not giving me a support skill and we're going to have two of these uh, earth dudes. So how much does he actually cost? He costs two. That means we have three points left. Uh, so for three points, what can we get? Well, we're going to have half a point missing, but that just kind of comes with the territory. We're going to do this guy and the other Earth guy. I'm almost thinking that we should take one of the fire guys just for the, um, just for the buff. Because we can get one buff, but it's like, eh, I don't know, we have, we'll, we'll take the Earth guys for now. I mean, like I said, we also have multiple attempts at that particular boss, so there's that. Let's go with next, and uh, let's select, once again, the guy that's got the robot here. We'll rent this bad boy again, it's going to cost 90 spirit points. But bear in mind, I mean, you're not going to be fighting raid bosses all the time, it's not like you have to spend spirit points every single time. But what we're going to be doing this time around is, uh, since we have a, an Earth character to kind of deal with the uh, water minions, I'm going to put the light guys attacking the boss, and I'm going to have the Earth character attack the water minions. Because we have two light characters, they're going to be dishing out quite a bit of punishment on the boss, and we have time to 
they shot a bit of punishment on those water characters as well, thus diminishing the boss's attack power. So this guy is going to basically wreck her, and we have a skill here, which is Holy Rain, going to deal damage on every single enemy. And we can have this guy attack that spirit. The boss is going to do a skill that's going to dish out quite a bit of damage. I hate that. Here comes the Holy Rain now. Boosh. Hopefully our dude will be able to take out that water element next. That water spirit even, not water element. So much for our light um, spirit there. The guy that we had rented. Um, let's go attack the boss for now that thing was dead anyways you can attack the boss too now now we have three spirits on the boss we're still not gonna make it okay i hit one attack on the boss that was pretty sweet we're gonna be able to do a holy rain here which i'm trying to take as much advantage of and another attack on the boss there pretty good Ooh, there we go another holy rain there if the boss attacks my holy guy it's going to be a pain Ooh, there goes one of my earth dudes it's just like right now, it's just a matter of chew down the boss as much as you possibly can. There goes another Earth dude. Come on, give another attack on that boss. Okay, now that you've done the attack, let's see if you can still cast an Holy Rain before you go. Thank you. Okay, and now he's going to die. Oh, the boss even did a skill on that one. Wow, talk about overkill. But still, this was only our second attempt. We get five attempts on each raid boss. So we're actually doing pretty good. I mean, for two attempts, we've taken like um, a little over 4,000, actually a little over 5,000 of his health pool uh, down, considering he only has uh, 7,000. I mean, uh, maybe one, two more tops, two more fights tops. We're going to bring him down to his knees. Now, I think that the party we had going now is actually pretty solid, so I'm not going to touch it at all. Uh, we're going to just keep it going like this. And we're going to get that uh, rental again, because that rental is doing pretty damn well for us. We're spending a lot of spirit points, but again, um, you want to get these raid bosses down, because this event is only going to be around for a while, and it's going to enable you to unlock specific spirits for summoning, so you want to take down as much of these bosses as you can. This is actually the second or third time that I'm fighting against this, uh, this raid boss here. So let's see what we can do. We're going to put the light dudes on the boss again, and we're going to put this guy here. What's this guy's skill, by the way? Raises speed by 50% when HP is 15% or less. Yeah, that doesn't really... Um, I don't really want to use that. In case you're wondering how much do you need of the white bar to actually cast a skill, it says there with that white arrow that you see on top of the bar for each of these uh, characters. So if you see here, this guy requires a little bit less from the skill bar, and this guy requires... It's somewhere in the middle of those two. So, let's uh, keep things going. So we're getting some decent uh, hits on the boss there. This guy is getting some decent hits on those water elementals, so hopefully we'll get those down pretty soon. One of the things that I want to do as fast as I can is going to be Holy Rain, which we have right now. That is going to hit every single one of them. Supposedly he would summon... No, he didn't summon another water elemental. Still. This guy should be able to take care of that uh, last water... Uh, I keep calling them water elementals. That last water spirit here. There we go, that takes care of that. Now focus on the boss. I think we might be able to take down the boss this time around because we still have one more spirit in the, um, in the back burner there. Let's get our holy rain skill up as well. Just dish out as much damage as we possibly can. Holy damage, all the better. Not holy light damage even. Ooh, that hurts! But we still have the squirrel dude here. He's gonna beat you. He's gonna beat you down, dude. Oh, come on, one more hit. Thank you, and the squirrel guy's gonna finish it right here. Boosh. And that is the raid boss dead. So that, again, these events are apparently constantly occurring in Destiny of Spirits. And it's actually pretty cool. I kind of like the, the gaming mechanics of it. I can't say that I'm a strong supporter of their... Um, of their uh, premium model, which is to, you know, you have to actually spend some money on those gems. But I mean, free to play still has to get some get, still has to get money off of users somehow. We receive the reward. What do we get here? Uh, I have to probably go check my my game mail to see what they sent me as a reward. Because usually they send you stuff to your. Oh, actually, they didn't send me anything. Because you will have like uh, exclamation marks 
whenever you actually get something. So another feature that I haven't mentioned yet is the hunting feature. This is actually a really cool feature for those of you who are uh, you. Oops, wrong feature there. This is actually a really great feature for those of you who take your Vita uh, to multiple locations, uh, preferably locations that have uh, internet because you are required to have internet. But what the hunting feature does is uh, it's going to give you a general direction that you can travel to, which is like your lucky direction or whatever. Like for instance, right now, your luckiest direction would be to travel east. I'm not exactly sure what the graphic on the right side means, but it basically tells you if you want to have more chance of acquiring spirits, take your Vita east. But I mean, that doesn't really matter. It's just telling you like the, the best way that you could get those spirits. I mean, I wouldn't advise people to run around with a car in a 3G connection trying to hunt spirits down. I don't think that's the whole point. But like, let's say for instance, you're going to a friend's house, something like that, you take your Vita with you. And when you get there, you can then press the hunt button and you, there's gonna be a chance that you will hunt uh, different spirits because let's say you moved, I don't know, however many kilometers to go from your house to your friend's house. And um, then when you get there, you have internet connection, you get the whole GPS thing going on and you hit hunt and you're going to have a chance of just acquiring spirits because you took your Vita with you somewhere. Again, I think that these kinds of things are actually really interesting. Uh, me personally, I find this more interesting than like the, the 3DS equivalent feature, which is the, um, what do you call that? The cross street, street cross, street pass, street pass, that's it, street pass. Um, I think these kinds of things are a little bit more interesting because they actually have some effect on games. I believe that you also get effect on games on 3DS. I mean, I don't know too much about 3DS, but I like these little uh, features that you get here uh, that kind of try and get you to take your Vita with you to places and whatnot. Uh, I think overall, Destiny of Spirits is a really good idea. Like I said, I'm not necessarily a strong supporter of the the whole um, of the whole limited summoning thing that you can do that you re it requires you to basically have the the premium currency of the game uh, because it, it is a little bit frustrating. Like I would very much like to collect the spirits from Gravity Rush. I would also like to eventually uh, increase my ability to have more spirits and whatnot and you either buy it or you kind of have to, if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you kind of have to wait because supposedly I'm going to be getting it every month. There's also some promotions that apparently they do every now and then and they give people a couple of this premium currency, but most of the time apparently you're going to have to spend money for it. So that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. But me personally right now, I'm having some fun with it. Uh, I can see myself playing this like, you know, every now and then kind of check up like my daily bonus and whatnot and do a couple of missions and I know, it just seems like a fun little game and I thought I'd tell you guys my personal opinions on it. As per usual, leave me your comments, feedback, all that kinds of good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one.